Well, good, good afternoon, good friends. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and welcome back to a living room, windowsill, thrift haul. Everything that you see on this thrift haul, on this counter here, is currently for sale in the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm gonna tell you about all of these wonderful items in just a moment. But first, today's cup of coffee is brought to you by well, it's brought to you by Taylor Smith Taylor, and here it is in their wonderful um, white mug with the terrific 1960s turquoise on the inside. That's a little bit of black coffee. Let me have a sip of that. You have a sip of yours. And let us begin. And we won't really get delve into the construction today. The men are out there, men and women are out there working. One more floor to go. Some of these things you've seen, and I think most of them you haven't. So let's begin with something that you saw this tiny little, and it is tiny. So I don't know what size biscuits you're gonna get in there. Um, probably was intended for some other use. You did see this before, and I'll tell you again, quickly why I'm annoyed. The little rim on the inside, flange, lip, whatever you want to call it, is almost completely chipped away. There's almost none of it left as you can see, which means that the lid fits on the top, sits on the top, and it will stay in place for the most part, but it could easily slide off because of the missing part that catches the lid. I don't know what you call that, a flange? I don't know what that is. And there are a few chips on the footed base, but there's there are no cracks or chips in the actual sides. And it's a beautiful little thing. Um, you want to put Q-tips in it and keep it in your bathroom? Why not? Here is a beautiful unmarked white porcelain, uh, white pottery vase. We'll get it. I know the light. I have to turn things so that you can see it. In an Art Deco style, the glaze is crazed. I love it two handles and there's no damage on it until I drop it which I'm not going to do totally unmarked obviously a made in the USA piece and it was never drilled as a lamp so don't we love that uh, oh well, it's about eight inches tall or so and uh, as I said there's no damage on it just really pretty soft white pottery vase American made here is a tiny little pink satin glass powder jar. And if you hear the whistling, that's not my hearing aid. It is the wind coming through these old windows. We have a windy day today. From the 1930s powder jar, as I said, embossed on the sides with a tiny little original lid that fits right on top. Sits right on the top there like that. And this is marked on the bottom. I've seen this mark before, but I have to tell you, I can't remember who it is. 
some of some of you will know I just can't is that some cosmetics company or something it's hard to see it yeah I can't remember I know I've seen that and by golly it escapes me Meshes about three by three and it is a cute little thing okay let's see let's move this out of the way uh, and then I only have one of these lovely delicate little soup bowls cream soups you know uh, Tressman and Vacht, Vacht uh, the French Limoges but look at the beautiful hand-painted yellow roses on there if I turn it the right way and what unusual handles we have yellow luster in the center of the thing and these just these beautiful handles which have never been broken off sadly I've only got one but you could feed the cat in style out of this thing why not and there's the Limoges mark on the bottom very thin beautiful uh, uh, porcelain here is a wonderful firkin a 19th century firkin which um, these were for household use so they had several different several different household usages for these and this one is in the uh, finger and stave construction style here with a bent wood handle all handmade and it is signed by the 19th century New England maker of this thing and we'll zoom in on the top of it you can look this fellow up uh, let me get it turned the right way this is made in Massachusetts by Ephraim Murdoch Jr. Can you see that? Ephraim Murdoch Jr. And he was working in, uh, as I said, you can look it up. Uh, this is going to be late 19th century. So we're in the 18, I forget what year he died, but we're in the 18, somewhere between the 1860s and the 1890s on that. It's in the original finish and in remarkable condition. A few chips on the lid. Uh, this was a, a household must for folks in the olden days. Sometimes it was actually used for kitchen scraps. But we can see the graduated staves. We have three of them here just as Mr. Murdoch made it. The two at the bottom and then one here at the top. And they're held in place with these little brass tacks here all handmade and it's just got a wonderful old feel to it we'll take the lid off and take a look at the inside no funny smell well let me smell it no it just smells old yep just just what we like okay so there's the inside it's very it's uh it's sound and tight it's not falling apart we'll turn it upside down and let you see the bottom of it as well okay very authentic great piece of New England history American history and what a great old New England name my paternal grandmother's family are New Englanders a lot of Ephraims in the family on that side uh, here is a lovely been buying these compotes here's another one I think I showed you this before but forgot to list it I love how elegant this one is there's no damage on it and these are typically used on tables you could use them and they would often advertise these as for preserves could go in here but with this great big tall stem I would put candy or nuts or, or that kind of thing in it and it's in fantastic condition Here's a red Bakelite handled uh, pastry knife, pastry, uh, yeah, not knife, but you know what I'm trying to say. And this one is made by Adiron, wait a minute, Andoc, stainless steel, and Androc, there we go. Okay, so you pastry folk. I have two delightful owls. Let me get down here where you can see the Made in Japan bookends, and it's dark. Let's get the light on these two. Maybe we should turn them this way, and they'll light up a little bit better. There we go. Aren't they nice? 
It's got that sort of sprayed on airbrush paint technique where it's just scraping off in places, but nothing is broken on them. Their little ears have not been uh, chipped and cracked and repaired. So I believe these are, well, I don't see, I, I thought these were made in Japan. They have that left in Japan feel and they may be marked somewhere and I just can't see it. So there they are. We will turn them around there on the sides and the backs. Okay, now we are in summertime and we've just begun summertime, but you know what season happens after summertime. Mm-hmm. The autumn season, and we love to decorate with those kinds of things at that time. Now you'll see people call this everything. Blue powder glass, French opaline, French blue custard. You'll hear it called powder blue, blue opaque. Call it what you want, just don't call it late for dinner. Who made it? Northwood made a lot of this blue glass. Most of the time when I see it by Northwood, it's, in a, it's a little more custardy. It has a little more of a, uh, a little more white to it. This one is semi-transparent. Okay, we can see through it. It lets in a little bit of light. I don't know that I mean to say semi-transparent. Maybe I do. What do I mean to say? Uh, unmarked doesn't surprise me, but I can tell by the mold and all of that that we're right around 1920 or thereabouts. And remember, Fenton did some of this, Imperial did some of it, and certainly uh, Northwood. So it's just a beautiful blue glass bowl. Probably had candlesticks, and it's an old one. You could put a frog in there and make a flower bowl out of it if you wanted. And I think it's got one, almost, we shouldn't even mention, flea bite right there, which actually just feels rough, like some roughness from the mold. Look at these wonderful 1930s or 40s, probably the 30s because of these wonderful soft pastel colors. Chalkware uh, wall pocket baskets for your kitchen. How fantastic to find a matching pair that have not been repaired and do not have serious damage. So no broken handles on that. We see back here, we have a mold mark there and a tiny little place for the nail. There's a little bit of chipping on the back of that handle. And this one here, we'll take a look at it as well. Uh, it doesn't have any of that chipping on the back and it also has a little hole there to hang it as well and there it is so I, I love these and I think that you will too especially if you have uh, sort of that old-fashioned kitchen in mind these are just really really nice made by American Bisque is the kitty cat cookie jar yeah I was going to keep it but you know what I'm pretty rough with my ginger snaps. That thing is going to get broken, so we will pass it on. Uh, there is no damage on this at all. There's our kitty cat lid, which has no cracks in it. And there is the base. Hear that? That's just telling you there are no cracks. There's that typical American bisque base. It says USA on the back. And the green and the little frolicking kittens all around the cookie jar. It's clean on the inside. We don't have any uh, crazing that I can see on it. It's about in as uh, good of condition as you could expect to have it. So, 1940s cookie jar. Let me get back down here where you can see it a little bit better. Okay, light. That is charming. Ooh, look at that big thing over there. Who made it? Well, Fenton made one, and so did Imperial. And if you really geek out, you can tell the difference between the two. I'm just going to say <laughs> either Fenton 
or Imperial. Now, Imperial referred to this as their fashion uh, punch bowl. Today, we, re we refer to this as Marigold. Some of the companies in those days referred to it as Sunset. I don't, um, I can't remember if Imperial used the word Sunset or not, but we just say Marigold Carnival Glass today. So it was manufactured this way in two pieces and in the original advertising, and I'm gonna insert a, a bit of advertising here in just a moment. This is a 12 inch punch bowl here, which could be used on the stand. Yeah, okay, as a punch bowl. Now, in the advertising, let's get this milk pitcher out of the way. I hate the sights of accidents. All right, so the original advertising said, very clever by Imperial, uh, on its own, the punch bowl, when sitting on the table such as we see it here, could be used as, you guessed it, a fruit bowl or for serving salads. And when they said salad, they don't, they didn't necessarily mean salad the way eat it, we eat it today, a green leafy salad, but different salads that could be served in those days. Um, so you have a nice serving bowl there. The stand for the punch bowl, it is advertised to be turned upside down and used as a vase or to serve preserves. And we see a lot of uh, tableware in those days, especially for serving jellies and preserves and things. So you could use it that way. Very functional. We'll put it back the way that it was. By the way, there is not a single chip on any of this. There are no cracks on it. You will find an occasional what's called a straw mark. And you folks who are conversant with your old glass you're uh, very much aware of what that is. We didn't even have chips around this uh, rim of the punch bowl. Okay, let's get back in there. It's unsigned. They usually are. A very heavy piece and stunning. Very versatile. And again, I'm not going to hold on to this until October to sell it. It is up for sale right now. I'm going to go back over everything in a minute and tell you what is for auction and what is for buy it now because I'm doing combinations. Here's a beautiful little milk pitcher that's unmarked uh, on the bottom. And it is also trans... Can we see through it? I see a little bit of light coming through. I can't see through it, but we're getting a little bit of light. Isn't that pretty? The way they've done that. It's got a beautiful glaze on it. I'm trying to get this thing into the light and I really should be out in the kitchen so you can see it better. I don't know who made this. It is so fine and so delicate, but completely unmarked. Uh, as we're able to see, as we're able to have some light pass through it. Just that, I like that a lot. So if anyone recognizes the company, who manufactured this I'd love I'd love to know another small piece of glass not sure of the maker it's just a pretty amethyst basket art glass basket <clears throat> how does that look not signed on the bottom applied clear handle it's a pretty one beats me of course we recognize anchor hocking Moonstone, that's the nine inch serving bowl with its matching underpants, which is 10 and a half inches on the bottom. Wonderful to have those two together and the bowl sits right in there, secure, securely. So feel free to use that any way you like. Made during the uh, war and uh, oh, 041 to 46, something like that. And then I have a lamp here, which I'm not selling the shade. You know I keep my shades. This is just to give you an idea what it looks like. I guess I should show you the lamp. It is made of pottery and it has an Asian style here. These two handles are wonderful. There's no damage on them. Lovely old brass socket with a harp. 
So you'll need a shade that fits over a harp. There's no crazing or cracks and we have a nice old metal base. The lamp has been rewired for safety and it probably dates to the 1940s. It's just an attractive small table lamp. Also, I did not sell, I didn't have any <clears throat> phonograph collectors at the antique show. I did take my phonograph to the antique show and didn't sell it. Had a lot of interest, but it just didn't sell. That's up for auction right now, and we're not going to talk any more about that because you've heard it play, and if you want to hear another, if you didn't hear it play, you can go back and find an old video, or you can, yeah, you can go find an old video uh, in the old Curiosity Shop, and you can also go and look at the auction page because now we can include videos in some of our auctions on eBay, which is exciting. I've started to do that. Put little you know 10 second videos of things okay I'm backing up because I want to tell you depending on when you watch this video and I don't know when you'll see it but if you go to the eBay store and see that some of the things are gone it means I listed them as buy it now items sometimes I'll have a price and say you know make offers or I'll just have a buy it now price uh, and if you aren't subscribed to the old curiosity shop store if you'll do that you can go to ebay and do that you'll get notifications when i list things and sometimes i'll do drafts and you know it, it might be listed at three o'clock in the morning or something like that when a draft goes up so you never really know but you'll get notifications when i have new things in the shop uh, anyway that's <laughs> that's it thank you for watching everyone uh what was your favorite thing i have to say that because I like wood, this beautiful old New England firkin has got to be number one. And coming in second for me and third are the 1930s and 40s kitchen pieces here. Of course, I love that too, but oh my goodness, really, I love it all. Okay, that's it. I don't know how that fly got in here, but I'll deal with him in just a minute. Thank you for watching. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. So long for now. Oh, wait for the cat. So long for now.